In the previous part of this tutorial, we started building custom brushes and explored how to make the most of Illustrator's scatter and art brush features. This time we will continue with the same project and learn how to build a professional pattern brush from the assets we created last time. You might remember or recall that we created these details with an art brush and we decided that it works well if we create similar length brush lines but when we are drawing longer or shorter details it gets distorted so this doesn't look good and also this doesn't look good so let's resolve this by going back to the original details and prepare them for a custom pattern brush this brush type is probably the most complex one and it takes the longest time to set up properly but believe me doing this really pays off and it's worth the extra time and effort so the first thing that we need to do is to select all the little details that we created last time with the scatter brush and make sure that they are expanded. The reason for that is because we will need to rotate all of the details soon. And if I rotate these lines, notice that their orientation is not changing. So they are still pointing upwards. So what we need to do is to expand their appearance from the object menu. So object, expand appearance. And now when I'm rotating them, they are going to follow the changes. So that's great. But what we also need to do is to select this guide. Now, if it's locked from last time, you might remember, you can unlock it from this menu. But what we need to do is to also release this guide because we will have to also rotate it. And guides can be transformed or scaled and moved around, but they cannot be rotated. So for this technique that we need to do next, we also need to use this shortcut, Command Option 5 or Control Alt 5, and that will turn the guide back into a normal shape. So that's all we needed to do. And now we can select everything. And I will make it a little bit smaller while holding down shift key. I'll just drag it down and then let's rotate it again, holding down the shift key, making sure it goes into a horizontal perfectly like this. Let's put this here on the top and then duplicate it twice. Alter option key with the selection tool, drag it down once and then one more time here at the bottom. So we will be creating three separate sections, the bottom, the center, and the top part of the cactus. To keep it easy, the detail on the top I will use for the top section of the cacti. So I will select this rectangle and drag the left edge of it over to the right side. So it's almost like flipping the rectangle without affecting that original line that we had there. That's very important because that will need to be aligned to the central segment. I will do the same thing here at the bottom, select again the rectangle and then drag it onto the left. Now to simplify things, I'm going to also make sure that these rectangles don't have much gap on the edges. So I just drag these rectangles a little bit closer. They don't have to align perfectly. Just make sure that you don't have much empty space there. And now that we have these ready, we have to also make sure that these rectangles are on top of everything else in our layer structure. The way we can do that quickly is by selecting them holding down the shift key, I can select all three of them and then right click, arrange, bring to front or use the shortcut command shift square bracket or control shift square bracket. And that will put them here on the top of the layer structure. Now we can select these details here on the top. So making sure that both the rectangle and all the illustration details behind it are selected and then use command or control seven to turn it into a clipping mask. Let's do the same thing here in the middle. Let's select this, Command or Control 7, and then once again, Command or Control 7 here at the bottom. So now we have these three separate sections ready, the top, the center, and the bottom parts of the cactus. But before we go any further, for the top section, I will create a version where there's no flower. So I will just simply select this group, Alt click and drag or option click and drag to duplicate and then double click to get into it and then delete the flower with the backspace or delete. Then double click outside to exit the isolation mode 
Now, technically we have everything ready to create our pattern brush, but still we have one more thing to do and that is to eliminate the clipping masks. The problem with clipping masks in a pattern brush is that they leave huge gaps between the sections. So when it's supposed to repeat nicely, there will be big gaps that you can't really remove. So to avoid this happening, what you need to do is to select one of these sections. I'm going to start with this one in the middle and go up to the object menu and choose expand as the first step and then click OK in the expand menu. But then you also need the Pathfinder panel and click on the crop option. That way it's going to get rid of everything that was originally inside the clipping mask and it will only preserve the details that were visible. So notice how the selection or the bounding box changed. Let's see this a couple of more times just so you remember what to do. So I select this other one, go up to expand and then OK and then crop from Pathfinder. We have to do this two more times. So object, expand, OK, crop and then once again object expand ok crop now we have everything ready for the pattern brush so let's start with the center part with this selected i can just simply drop it into the brushes panel and choose pattern brush and when the dialog box comes up you can see why i started with the center part because by default that's what's added to the brush first so these five little swatches here are called tiles and they each are dedicated to certain parts of your pattern brush. The first one is for the outer corner. The second one is the side tile it's called, but I call it the center part. And then there is one for the inner corner tile, but we won't be bothering with that. What's more important is the start and end tile. So we will set up the start tile for the bottom part of the cactus and the end tile will be the top with the flower. The only setting that I'm going to change here at this point is the scale, which I will set to probably, let's say 40%. We can always come back and make changes to this. And then I'm going to click on OK. So notice that we can already see these tiles here in the brush panel. But what we need to do now is to select the bottom part of the cactus and start dragging it over the brush panel, but then hold down the Alt or Option key with which we can target that specific tile that we need, which is this one here. This is the start tile. The one on the right is the end. This is the start tile. So let's just hold down the Alt or Option key and let go the mouse. That's going to add that detail there. Then we can click OK. And then let's do the same thing with the top. I'm going to do first the one with the flower. So I'm going to hold down the old key while I'm targeting this last tile, which is the end tile. And you will see it updating here in the dialog box as well. So the tile shows a preview of what you just added. Let's just click OK. And now we are actually ready to test this out. So let's move here in this empty artboard. Select the brush tool by pressing B on the keyboard, making sure that this new pattern brush is selected and then let's draw a line. So I start from the bottom and go up. Let's draw another one and then let's draw one more and maybe move this a little bit closer. And there you go, we have perfect continuous details without anything being stretched. Before we continue, I just wanted to let you know about our creative membership program. For a small monthly fee, you get access to over 200 hours of Adobe Certified Online Training courses. Master all the tools and skills needed to become a professional graphic designer or illustrator. As a pro member, you will get mentoring from me and my team, access to webinars, student forum, and creative briefs to help you build an outstanding portfolio. Pro members can also download the project files for all of our YouTube tutorials. Sign up at yesimadesigner.com slash memberships and start your free trial today. And now let's head back to the tutorial. The only thing now is that you might want to create a few stems without flowers on them. For this, we will go into the brushes panel and from the drop down menu, we choose duplicate brush. And on this new version, we are going to replace the top by using this other variant. 
So once again, drag over, hold down the Alt key and replace that detail. So that's how easily you can update any segments of your brushes. And just to test this out, if I select an existing brush line and choose this other brush, it's going to immediately update to that. So we can easily switch between a stem without a flower or with a flower. Now it seems like these pattern brushes work perfectly, but let me point out one weakness. What happens if I draw one that's much shorter than these other lines? So I'm going to use the brush tool, select the one with the flower, and maybe I want to have a little branch or stem coming here to the side. So if I draw a short one, that will look a little bit weird. I mean, this one maybe is not that bad, but if I draw an even shorter one, it still gets distorted. But if I draw a medium length, it can get even worse. So once again, you can see the stretching going on here. So what happened here? The problem is that we have a very long center part, which is great for these long details, but it's not going to work as well for these shorter or medium length lines. For this, again, we need to have a brush that will have a much shorter center tile. So if you remember in the previous episode, we set up this very narrow piece, which will come in handy now. I'm going to move this onto the artboard and make sure that it's aligned in size to these other details, and it seems fine. So now what I can do is to create a duplicate for this brush for both versions. So let's select both of these brushes and choose duplicate brush. So now I will have two of each of them and select the one with the flower first and then select the little piece here, drag and move it over, hold down the alter option key to replace the center parts, which will update that brush. But then we will have to do the same with the other duplicate brush. Again, holding down alter option key and target that center tile and then click OK. Now, we successfully created the variations that we needed. So for the longer details like these, we have our original two brushes, but for these medium and short lines, now we have these additional brushes and let's just test it out. So I have this one selected, click on this one and you can see immediately how much better that looks. The same thing here, if I select that, and I choose this brush, it looks already much better, but still don't forget that you can use the brush tool and paint over it if it doesn't look right. You can stretch it out a bit or move it in a direction that is going to work better, something like that. And of course, there's plenty of refinements we could do still with these brushes and improve the settings on them. But essentially, this is what I wanted to cover in this two-part mini-series. So we've done a scatter brush, an art brush, and several pattern brushes. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, please use the comment section below if you have any better techniques that you would like to share with us. And also don't forget to use hashtag yes, I'm a designer whenever you are sharing any illustrations that you created based on this tutorial. So have fun experimenting with these features and try it out on different objects because it doesn't always have to be a cactus. Thanks a lot for watching. Like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos. Click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals. Have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.